Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. It is my privilege to move the motion in my name that speaks to what I believe to be the most important thing that we have powers over in this Parliament, Scotland's education system and the future of our children and our country. I have said before in this chamber that the gift of a Scottish education is the most prized gift that Scotland can give to her children, and our education system is central to our national identity. An education system that gives our young people confidence to move forward, that thrives on innovation, that sparks entrepreneurship, that extends equal opportunity to all, the very definition of levelling up. An educational tradition that makes us feel proud of our Scottishness, which is why, presiding officer, you should expect to hear strong words and emotion from these benches this afternoon about the way that our education system has been maltreated by the SNP. Their end of year report card reads, must do better. The Scottish Conservatives have education at the heart of our political philosophy, because education must be a golden ticket for every individual to live the life they desire to live. The equal opportunity to succeed in life is core to the Scottish Conservative vision of the Scotland we want to see. Inspirational teachers are crucial to education, and the Scottish Conservatives are standing up for Scotland's teachers. I know how much I owe my teachers. Mr Mitchell, my history teacher at Forfar Academy, who fired my enthusiasm for history. Mrs Skinner, my English teacher, who told us that if they wanted to develop any kind of a vocabulary, we should read the Times at least once a week. Sound advice indeed. We owe so much to our teachers, but we also have a responsibility to them. For the first time in 40 years, teachers are taking industrial action in Scotland. Teachers are frustrated. The teachers I speak to don't want to be on strike. They want to be in the classroom doing what they train to do and love to do, teaching our children. But they expect to be respected. They deserve to be treated fairly. And they've been waiting eight months for this Cabinet Secretary to get serious. Shirley Ann Somerville has made a total mess of this situation. She blamed the teachers, she blamed the unions, she blamed the local councils, she even blamed the UK government. The only innocent party in this dispute, according to the Cabinet Secretary, is the Cabinet Secretary herself. What should have been resolved months ago is unresolved, and the buck stops with Shirley Ann Somerville. John Mason. Yeah, I thank the member for giving way. He has not yet said, although he's implying that there should be a better pay increase. Now, I understand the teachers have been offered £35,000, which seems reasonable. Could he put a figure on what he wants? Stephen Kerr. I thank uh, the member for his intervention. If I was at the negotiating table, this, this dispute would have been resolved months ago. But the, cabinet, but the Cabinet Secretary, who has the responsibility to be at the negotiating table, has failed to resolve this dispute and is intent on blaming everybody else for this dispute, including the teachers themselves. I will give way. Cabinet Secretary Shirley Ann Somerville. Uh, I thank Mr Kerr uh, for taking another invention. He didn't actually um, answer the point, so if he was at the negotiating table, what would he offer and where would he take the money from in the education budget? Stephen Kerr. I think that the Cabinet Secretary may have got this the wrong way round. She comes to Parliament to be held accountable by the members of this Parliament. So I ask the Cabinet Secretary, what exactly is she doing to bring the teacher's dispute to an end? That's far more pertinent than asking me what I would do. What are you doing, Cabinet Secretary, to end this dispute? And there have been... And there have been nearly 75,000 reported incidents of violence or serious threat against teachers in the past five years, over 20,000 of them in the last academic year alone. This means there is... I will. Liam Kerr. Uh, thank you. In February, I raised in this chamber uh, a survey which said that nearly half of our dedicated, hard-working teachers in Aberdeen were considering quitting due to the levels of violence that he's just raised. And a fortnight ago, I raised that uh, teachers at Northfield Academy had, had, to take, had taken a decision to industrial action on the same basis. Can I ask the member, while researching today's debate, 
Has he come across any evidence of this government doing anything, as a result of my questions, to help teachers in Aberdeen? Stephen Kerr. And I thank, thank my friend for his intervention, and I think he already knows the answer to that. There is no evidence of anything happening. I'll tell you what the current level of reported incidents of violence and threat amounts to. There is an incident when a teacher is attacked or threatened in Scotland every three minutes. And by the time we finish this debate, 40 such incidents will have been recorded. Teachers striking at Northfield Academy and Barnum and High School do so because they feel vulnerable, unprotected and unsupported by this SNP government. But all this Cabinet Secretary ever does is pass the buck. It is the SNP that have cut deep into the resources of local government. And it is up to the SNP to reorder their political priorities to properly fund the resolution to these disputes, to end the defunding of local government and put resources back into the classroom. With a 15.6% cut in ASN teachers since 2012, despite a 92% increase in demand, teachers are run ragged and unsupported by the specialists they need. What is the Cabinet Secretary going to do to protect and support our teachers? What is she going to do about discipline in our schools? The SNP is leaving. I won't give way. I think I've taken a number of interventions now. The SNP is leaving many newly qualified teachers without jobs. Out of nearly 1,800 probationers in 2012, only 400 had a permanent contract last year. 400 were so scunnered that they had left teaching altogether. This is a tragic waste of talent. How on earth does the Cabinet Secretary think these newly qualified teachers can get on with the rest of their lives or plan for their futures when they don't even have a permanent contract? How does this make teaching the attractive career in Scotland we all need it to be? Why isn't she banging the table to fix this problem? The SNP like to pretend that they are succeeding on attainment by focusing on the attainment gap. But writing in The Times in June, Professor Lindsay Patterson criticised the SNP's approach and showed that the marginal gains in narrowing the attainment gap were only a reflection of a fall in attainment at the top end. Not so much levelling up as levelling down. He also said that today we know less about the performance of Scotland's schools than at any time since the 1950s. The SNP have taken us out of the international comparison tables on attainment. They are so reluctant to face reality that they simply don't measure it. So, Cabinet Secretary, today, will you commit to putting Scotland back into those international comparators so we can learn how we are doing for our young people and our children? The First Minister said her neck was on the line. Education was her sacred responsibility. Well, it's a shame that she didn't even bother to turn up this afternoon for our debate on education, which is rare enough in this parliamentary timetable. But it's really, it's really no wonder what little data we have illustrates just how much the SNP are failing. Fewer people, pupils at primary school are achieving the expected curriculum for excellence level in reading, writing, numeracy, listening, talking than in 2018. That is pretty much every subject area at a primary school. This, presiding officer, is not a debating point or a matter to cover up or evade by dissimulation. It is a national disgrace and it is a scandal. Will the Cabinet Secretary tell us what she will do to address overall attainment in our schools made worse by her government's inaction? And we face another critical challenge, and that is in the availability of subject choice across all parts of Scotland. We are falling behind in science, technology, in engineering and in maths. The uptake in these subjects is at a five-year low, and there is a dramatic fall in the number of pupils studying modern languages, especially French, German and Spanish, compared with other parts of the United Kingdom. So will the Cabinet Secretary tell us what is being done to recruit teachers in STEM subjects 
and modern languages? What is being done to promote and facilitate subject choice? What is being done to attract more pupils into those subject areas? Now, the First Minister decreed that Education Scotland and the SQA are to be scrapped. No one I've ever spoken to or listened to in those organisations seemed to be prepared to accept that they had failed at all. Least of all, the leadership of those bodies. So surprise, surprise, it's those very self-same people who are now designing the new system. Only the SNP could create such a Lilliputian scenario. Be I will give way. Martin Whitfield. I am very grateful to the member to give way. Would you not also agree with me that it was disappointing the Scottish Government's announcement last week that the new body would retain um, the um, awarding and regulation of qualifications? Where is the change? Where is the hope for a better future? Stephen Kerr. I'm grateful to the member for his intervention. It's further evidence that this government and this cabinet secretary do not listen because all of the advice is to the contrary of what the government announced last week. I think what the Cabinet Secretary needs to understand is that being seen to do something is not the same as doing something. It just isn't. So I ask again, why are there 59 people on the reform delivery bodies, predominantly from the Scottish Government, Education Scotland and the SQA, and why are there only three places for teachers? And why does this all sound vaguely familiar as a game of musical chairs? Why is she so afraid of new voices and thinking in education reform? Did she even look at getting new people in? Presiding officer, I conclude. Scotland needs teachers who are confident, held in high esteem, and who are free to teach. Scotland needs head teachers who are free to lead their schools. Scotland needs Pupils free to learn without disruption in the classroom. Scotland needs schools that inspire and uplift our young people to be all that they can be in life. If we get those principles right, we will succeed in vitalising our education system. But when she stands to speak, I hope we might see a cabinet secretary with some passion, some reforming zeal, who will deliver an articulate vision of what Scottish education should be that goes beyond the normal SNP complacency and self-congratulation. Let's hear answers to the serious questions I have raised in my speech. Acknowledge the real challenges we face, and then let us work together across this parliament to tackle them together. I move the motion in my name.